Diablo 4 already has a ton of great Barbarian builds, but this has just taken Bash builds for the Barbarian to the next level. Shout out to Rob who created the initial variant, I believe, for this build. But let me tell you, I've been using it. It is insane and I've got to share it with you guys. Even only being like halfway maxed out to its potential, it can run high levels of the pit, well over level 100, and it can easily run all of the uber bosses completely solo to get you those juicy mats and those juicy uber uniques. Again, there's a ton of min maxing to do with my build. It's not even close to fully perfect and I can still hit well over 100 million. In a lot of cases, like you can see here, whether it's fighting uber bosses, and easily 50 to 100 million in regular pit levels, nightmare dungeons, and the rest of the end game content, and decimate world bosses in less than two hits. That being said, I'm gonna show you how to play the build, how to set it up perfectly. First, I'm gonna run over how the build works, but really quickly, check the link in the description. The full build planner is below in the description, as well as all of my other builds, and is also in the pinned comment below. That being said, this bar build is very unique for two reasons. Not only does it utilize our bash cleave, which as you've seen in previous videos and other builds from other people, does an insane amount of damage, but we're now using a Hoda variant of the build, meaning that Hoda variant with a couple changes is gonna help us to essentially charge up our attack to deal massive extra amounts of damage on top of the already amazing scalability of damage that we already have. Now, not only that, but there are a ton of changes to this build to allow us to maximize and cap out our life. Some builds being able to push 150,000 life. Currently, I'm only at 58 or 60,000 because, again, as you can see, I don't have my full gems. I also don't have fully maxed out gear, meaning greater affixes on all of my max life. If that's something that you do have, you can easily push 100 to 150,000 life, like I mentioned earlier, making you be able to tank almost every single thing in the entire game, basically just standing still if you want. Now, this build also has a bunch of quality of life adjustments from the last bash build that we did on the channel. And that's because we're gonna be swapping out some stuff like Bold Chieftain's Aspect to allow us to keep up our shouts on a very consistent basis. Meaning we're not gonna to have to wait for those cooldowns to refresh consistently. We're gonna be able to cut them down to a very small portion, allowing us to cast them consistently for again survivability and just overall fun of moving and playing the build and then again that hammer of the ancients as i'll show you here in a minute once we set up the build to charge our hammer i'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this build in this video first i want to touch on the skill tree keep in mind you're gonna see some skill bumps here because i do have a shako on but again all the skills i take is in the build description if you want to follow along or save that as an easy reference guide now obviously our main priority here is bash it's going to be our main damage dealing ability so not only obviously are we going to max out our bash because it's our primary damage skill there are a lot of people that do like using bash with the dual wielding weapons now what i will say is when using it with the two-handed weapon obviously it is slower it does cost you some of that attack speed and overall some of that damage but one of the big things we make up for when using our two-handed weapon is our survivability so when we're damaging a stunned enemy with bash we get 20 percent maximum life is four to five you actually double that amount when using a two-handed weapon which is one of the reasons i decided to do that because again that's going to give us 40 percent max life when we damage a stunned enemy with bash meaning we're filling up our fortify almost constantly over and over and over for half our health every single time we hit one of those stunned enemies meaning we're going to maintain our fortify our dr and make us near unkillable in almost all situations so that's again why i'm going with two-handed versus dual wielding you can pick and choose that's just my preference because i don't like to die and then we want to take this up to combat bash this is going to be a primary reason we take it because after critically striking four times there's this little icon that actually shows that you've bashed four times you're going to want to pay attention to that you want to use our hammer the agent skill which we'll talk about later but again it's going to overpower that skill and that will give us the benefit of the skill itself i'll show you in just a second but we use this to count to four with our bash use our hammer of the ancients, get a big damage buff, and then continue to repeat that cycle. And again, when using this method, you need to use the two-handed weapon in order to actually do this, which again is another reason why we're going with the two-handed. Now next for our core skills, we're gonna take hammer of the ancients. Now you can see I have five out of five here, that's because I have a shake on again. You only need one out of five. And then we're going to jump over to a violent hammer of the ancients. Now, how this works is after overpowering with Hoda, you deal 30% more damage for five whole seconds. That's a ton of additional multiplicative damage that we want. And that's going to give us some pretty big damage numbers. Now you're going to ask, how am I overpowering with hammer of the ancients? Like I mentioned again, this combat bash, meaning once we get it to four stacks, we're going to then cast our Hoda. That's going to guarantee our Hoda overpower, giving us that big damage buff. 
So then you're going to attack for five seconds and then repeat the process. Again, that's how it works. So we can buff our damage pretty significantly. Next, what we want is three out of three, four imposing presence to give us 18% additional max life and martial vigor for damage reduction against elites. That's going to be important in the end game. We also want one out of five for rallying cry into strategic rallying cry. This is going to give us fortify, allowing us to again stack our fortify with using bash as well, giving us consistent max fortify almost all of the time. This is going to give us that DR bonus that we like especially for late game one other thing you want is one out of three for outburst and then one out of three for tough as nails that's going to proc our thorns hitting enemies when they actually hit you meaning they're going to take bleeding damage and when they take bleeding damage that allows us to proc our dr against bleeding enemies which is big for our survivability and then we want challenging shout into enhance so we get the additional max life buff and the way we have this build set up using bold chieftains this is going to allow us to consistently keep our skills on almost no cooldown meaning that 7.4 seconds that that 48% damage reduction lasts we minimize that with the cooldown reduction on our gear as well allowing us to basically have this up probably 75% of the time making us really tanky this is one of the big improvements with bold chieftains instead of the last bash build that we had now you also want war cry here and this is going to go into power war cry now you have two choices here you can take power war cry so that way we get the big damage buff for 10% if at least six enemies are around, or you can do Mighty War Cry, granting you additional fortify. Now, keep in mind, this is going to make you more tanky. This one is going to give you more damage, which I typically like for higher level pit runs. Now, you also want Booming Voice 3 out of 3 for increasing our shout skill durations. This one's definitely must have. And then 3 out of 3 for aggressive resistance, again, giving us additional damage reduction while berserking. And we have that berserking buff up consistently all of the time. We also want 3 out of 3 for Pit Fighter for the additional damage in DR. 3 out of 3 for slaying strike, so we deal increased damage against injured enemies. And then no mercy, so we increase our critical strike chance against immobilized thunder slowed. We're taking 1 out of 3 for hamstring, so our bleeding effects from our thorns that hit everyone slow healthy enemies, meaning we're going to proc that crit strike chance against all of those healthy enemies, giving us big hits right up front. We also want Steel Grasp, and then we want to take that into Fighter Steel Grasp. Now, now this again adds Berserking, so we can keep that up consistently again. And Steel Grasp is used to pull in a bunch of enemies, make them all vulnerable, and start just wailing on them with Bash. So that's why you want this skill. So again, this is similar to the other Bash builds that I've done. And then Thick Skin, 1 out of 3, into Counter Offensive. Counter Offensive, you want to make sure if you get passive ranks to those on your amulet you want to try and take them because it's while you have fortified for over 50 percent which will have up consistently like 100 percent of the time we're fighting you deal 12 percent increased damage again it's another basic automatic damage increase overall for something we already have and then you want heavy handed so we deal increased critical strike damage for 200 weapons wall up for three out of three so we get increased damage and then we want to take concussion so that way on our lucky hit skills that use 200 weapons have up to a 60 percent chance to actually stun enemies again giving us that damage buff for stunning the enemy right here as well as the critical strike buff that we get from no mercy then as our key passive we take unconstrained to increase our berserking's maximum duration by five seconds and increase its bonus to 100 percent again upping our damage while berserking now i'll go over the gear really quickly it's very similar to the last build but i do want to go over a couple pieces that i've changed so first let's touch on the aspects for our aspects we're using the harlequin crest helmet then for our chest we want the undying aspect this is going to make it so when we cast a skill you heal for life by default considering we're casting a ton of skills this allows us to stay alive and heal very consistently especially doubling that bonus when below 50 percent life so this is a must-have our pants we're using the aspect of might so our basic skills grant 20 percent dr considering we're using bash as our primary damage dealer we're going to be casting this so much that buff will be up every single time you fight any enemy giving us that 20 percent dr across the board and then for our boots, we want the hectic aspect. So after casting five basic skills, one of your active cooldowns is reduced by 1.8 seconds, allowing us to bump down our cooldowns much, much quicker and be able to have them available for casting much quicker. This is one if you do feel like you need movement speed, you can swap out for. Uh, I don't think it's super, super important, but again, it just helps with the build, especially when it comes to boss fights. And next for our two-handed mace, we have the aspect of the moonrise. This is again, similar to the other bash builds. So when you damage an enemy with a basic skill, it grants you 4% attack speed for 10 seconds, and it can stack up to five times, meaning you can get, meaning as soon as you bash a couple times, you get a 20% basically flat attack speed bonus upping our damage again by 20%. And then also upon reaching maximum stacks, you enter a vampiric blood rage and you gain additional basic skill damage 
and movement speed on top of that this is a king of aspects at this point it's a it's so good and even if you're early level you should put this on your two-hander because it ups your damage for this kind of build dramatically now for our one-handers we're going to take edge masters primarily because this ups our damage with our available primary resource and with this build even though we have zero fury right now once we start attacking enemies within two seconds or so we're going to have max fury and not spend any because this build doesn't cost any fury because bash or any of our skills don't cost any so as soon as you fill that bar up all the way you're doing max damage with edge masters which is why we have it we also want the aspect of inner calm but unlike other builds we changed this to put this on our one hander so that we deal 10 percent increased damage and you actually triple this bonus while standing still great for boss fights and even pit runs when you can group up a bunch of enemies stand still and get big damage buffs this way we also want the rapid aspect on our other two hander giving us up to 60 percent increased attack speed for our rings now we did make a couple changes here we want the element of aspects this is similar to the last build so we get that increased damage for these different damage types for our other ring though we did change this to be the bold chieftains aspect now this is to reduce our shout cooldowns and gives us much higher cdr this makes the build and quality of life of the build just overall better and it doesn't actually detract very much from the build itself because again we put that aspect of intercom on our sword and then put this right here on our ring again letting our shouts cool down much quicker move a lot faster and it basically makes the build much more fun to play and then aspect of adaptability this is a big one you need on your amulet so when you cast with your max resource above 50 percent you deal additional increased damage to every enemy now i want to go over the stats on the gear so obviously we're using harlequin crest as our helmet this is good and ideally something here for like max life is good to have as a greater affix and cooldown reduction is another big thing. And then for our chest, there's a couple things you can take here. Ideally, I took total armor on the chest to buff up our armor percentage overall. As you can see, we have 9,853. The cap, I believe, is like, what, like 9,200 and... 38 or something like that so as long as you're at that number you're fine but before i tempered that on my chest to go ahead and get me to that point so that's something i'd recommend going ahead and throwing on there it saves you from having to have an armor affix on your gear uh, except for one piece so again we want strength and max life here ideally you want to put one of your resistances as an affix on this gear because the way it's set up you need two resistances on two pieces of gear to fully make sure your resistances are maxed out so again you can see i have tempered on total armor and concussion but again the max setup will be in the build planner we also are using pain gorgers gauntlets which is a must have for this build to really make it work and then you can see here we got lucky with some of our original master working to give us higher crit strike chance ideally crit strike chance or primarily attack speed if you can get that as your masterwork piece or again as a greater affix attack speed is king with this build it helps us ramp our damage high so that's what you want for our pants we have strength max life and bash i only have plus three to bash here but ideally you want to find pants that give you plus six or higher to bash this is going to give you much higher damage with the bash skill itself so that's the primary thing you want to look for with your pants nothing else with the pants really matters uh, but you obviously want strength and max life with that and then you want challenging shout cooldown i like concussion to help proc some of our other damage abilities and then for the boots you want double movement speed so move movement speed and the movement speed tempered and then you want armor because you need armor on at least one piece of gear for now to hit that max armor cap and then we want our other resistance if you can get it on your boots it's just the best place to put it in my opinion and then you can see i have thorns here on my boots i just rolled that because i just got unlucky but ideally you want another passive here similar to any of the other passives that we already have set up now for our mace we want strength max life and crit strike damage now for all our weapons we actually want strength max life and crit strike damage on all of them so all four weapons i won't go over that that's just what you want on all four now the tempered affixes are a bit different so you want damage to close enemies and bash cleaves for damage the bash cleaves for damage primarily is obviously the direct big upgrade for our bash skill to do the most amount of damage possible so you have to have that to bring the build online but if you can get it while you're master working you want the master working buff to go to bash cleaves for damage specifically this is going to help up your damage the most out of any of these affixes if you were to master work them now again the damage to close is important so we can stack that as multiplicative damage so as long as you have those five things you're going to be in business again the swords are also using strength max life and crit strike damage now the only difference with the two-handed swords is we have damage while berserking to buff that to meet some of our other requirements and max out our damage specifically around the paragon board which we'll talk in a minute but you can see we take the blood rage board and we get increased current and we get increased bonus to our berserking damage and this is important that we try and max this out as close to 30 as we get which is why we take damage while berserking here now again the swords are exactly the same except take damage while berserking instead of damage to close enemies and then for our two-handed sword we want the same as our mace strength max life crit strike damage 
damage to close enemies and bash cleaves for damage the weapon setups are fairly easy to get if you master those you deal you master pretty much the large majority of your original damage and then for our rings the setup i currently have we want strength attack speed and resistance to all elements ideally if i rerolled this if i got crit strike chance instead of strength this would be the best setup for me this is currently what i have so ideally you should aim for crit strike chance to get that up as much as possible the, the more crits we do the higher damage we're outputting so try and get crit strike chance as a greater affix and then for our other ring we want again crit strike chance attack speed our two primary things and then in this case strength now on this first ring we take resistance to all elements as our third affix this is because we want it to buff up a lot of our resistance to max it out with the current setup we have so make sure you have that on a piece ideally your ring would probably be best now for our first ring we're going to actually temper on steel grasp cooldown reduction to allow us to use steel grasp much more commonly and much much quicker again it gives us a 30 percent cooldown which is a pretty large cooldown for one tempered affix and then damage to close enemies to help Help with our damage overall and then again damage to close enemies for the second ring but war cry cooldown reduction on the second ring finally for the amulet we want crit strike chance cooldown reduction and attack speed with attack speed hopefully a greater affix and ideally masterwork into oblivion to give us the most attack speed possible currently using the same just because it's my best one but once i find another one with the right affixes on it i'm going to swap out that fury on kill for attack speed because the fury on kill for this build doesn't matter whatsoever and then challenging shot cooldown again for the amulet again to bump down our dr cooldown and then damage to close enemies again for the damage now you can see the overall stats of this build right now the way it's set up with with a minimal amount of gems and not fully maxed out equipment meaning i don't have greater affixes for my max life which is ideally what you want on your gear it leads me to only have about 58 or 60 000 health now obviously when we buff that with our shots and stuff this can go up much higher but 60 000 life allows you to tackle well into the tier 100 and all the uber bosses itself so without even min maxing this build right now we can take on every single thing in the game now for our two-handed expertise we take the two-handed axe so that way we increase our damage to vulnerable enemies as simple as that and next we'll go over our paragon board now again there are a decent amount of changes to this but we prioritize max life for survivability for tackling the pit and these uber bosses at the end of the game much much easier now you want to take a lot of the max life nodes for instance max life node here max life node here another one here here and here there's a ton of them all over the board and we prioritize them with this build so we're going to take the exploit glyph here to help our damage against vulnerable enemies and to make enemies vulnerable when hitting them for the first time and we used to take these nodes over here for armor but again with our armor buffs on our gear we no longer need this so we're going to take around here over to get this physical damage buff and save some of the paragon points from these nodes over here that we no longer need then we're going to jump up here to the warbringer board where we're going to take the territorial glyph again this is the same as previous bash builds except we're going to get rid of taking this physical damage node and some of these down here and make sure we keep this resistance to all elements node so we can max out our resistances this way keep in mind if you still have trouble with your resistances you can take some of these resistance nodes right here that at least gives you an additional three percent bump and again the territorial glyph gives us damage to close enemies which scales great with our build and it gives us that 10 percent damage reduction against close enemies which you need to have with this build because it makes it much much easier we also scale up here to take again maximum life up here here and here as well again bumping up our life again bumping up our life dramatically and before i redid this paragon board i had about 38k life and now i have again almost close to 60,000, allowing me to do a lot more content without dying and next we're going to take the carnage board next we want to take the iron glyph again similar to other bash builds but once we've reworked it just a little bit we got rid of these nodes over here for the additional damage while berserking because we don't necessarily need it because we have it on our gear so we stay with this damage while berserking nodes over here and then also again taking this damage reduction right here just from these couple of nodes again we get additional damage while berserking bonuses with the iron glyph and also 10 percent reduced damage from elites while berserking which is good for us pushing content and then the carnage node so while berserking critical strikes increase your attack speed by two percent again up to 16 percent basically an immediate 16 percent attack speed buff very useful for this build considering attack speed is one of our primary stats next you want to jump straight up and take the blood rage board now this is again going to give us a ton of additional damage while actually berserking this is a huge damage scaler for us so you want to get this bonus as close to 30 percent as you can which includes getting your damage while berserking on your two one-handed swords and by master working those and increasing them you can easily get them pretty close to maxing out this at 30 percent even with only like six ranks of master working on my swords i'm currently sitting at 26 percent so this is very easy to get to the maximum 30 percent bonus but we're going to want to take the martial glyph for 
the sport so that way after casting a shout skill we're reducing the cooldown of other non-shout skills by two seconds the big thing here is getting the 125 percent bonus to all magical nodes within the area again giving us additional damage reduction from bleeding enemies as well as additional damage to bleeding enemies the fifth board itself is going to be the hemorrhage board and you want to slot the might glyph in here so that way we get bonus to all the surrounding areas and increase damage when wielding two-handed weapons now the big things here you want to take grit and you want to take a butcher so that way we get these additional buffs as well as the additional damage reduction from bleeding but again and take this board fifth so that way you get that damage reduction from bleeding because that's the big thing we care about and again take this board fifth so that way you get the lower requirements for this board up here because we have four of these rare nodes that means that by taking this board fourth you'll again get the bonuses for all four of these nodes versus just these two after we do both of those we're going to jump over here and take our decimator board now this actually works in a very unique way that we proc it so ideally we want to take the undaunted glyph here so that way we get the damage while fortified and you also get the 10 percent damage reduction the more fortified you have and since we stay max fortified almost all the time we get maxed 10 percent damage reduction pretty much across the board this way we also get the damage reduction from vulnerable enemies right here on this node and we also get this node down here for additional max life as well as the max life nodes again right here we also get the max life down here for these nodes as well and then our decimator glyph itself which where each time you make an enemy vulnerable your damage is increased by 10 percent for five seconds and if you and if you overpower a vulnerable enemy meaning we need to cast our steel grasp first and then overpower the enemy with hoda that will give us an additional 10 percent damage bonus for five seconds as a straight buff which when stacking with Hoda brings it up to basically 40% additional damage just for using Steel Grasp and then hitting with Hoda while it's overpowered. Very simple to do, which I'll go over in the rotation. And then finally, our last board down here, the Bone Breaker board. All you need to do is come down here. No glyphs needed. Take this max life node here, 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 and here. Again, that's 6%, 8%. You get an additional 14% max life just from using a couple of Paragon points. Again, without even having a super max. That build almost 60k life without barely even trying. Now again, the rotation for this build is using our shouts as needed, but ideally the way it works is fairly simple. Mainly what you need to do is use Steel Grasp to pull enemies into you using your shouts as needed, especially your challenging shout for DR to stay alive. Once you've pulled all the enemies into you with Steel Grasp, then you're gonna hit them with Bash until you get four stacks of Bash, like I mentioned earlier. Once you get those four stacks of Bash, you're then gonna hit the entire group with a Hoda cast. Once you do that, you're gonna get the 30% additional damage buff from our hoda skill for five seconds upping our damage by 30 percent and then you're also going to proc that decimator node meaning you're going to add an additional 10 percent for 40 percent additional damage and then just keep bashing enemies and wailing on them then you'll essentially repeat the process so that you're constantly hitting enemies that you make vulnerable with steel grasp buffing up your damage that you're dealing with hoda using it as a sort of buff skill and then again dealing our massive damage with bash while using our shouts as needed and with the bold chieftains change you should have pretty awesome cooldown reduction on your shots allowing you to keep them up almost all of the time that's what makes the bash hoda build so op against some minor changes for some major results if you haven't make sure you check out that full build planner again in the description as well as some other builds if you're curious if this helps you drop a like on the video subscribe if you're new and i'll see you guys in the next one peace